In addition to setting up a badge that is awarded manually by the instructor, you can also create badges that are automated, which means that they are awarded to students based on activities in the Moodle class. So, for example, I am, go I am planning on um, having this particular badge called the Moodle Right-Footedness, which is a mouthful, um, be awarded to students if they complete each of these assignments. And then actually I'm going to add a quiz at the end, but let's, for, for my purposes right now, just pretend that it's for the completion of these assignments. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. you got to follow a couple rules. So rule number one is there is a setting for your page as a whole. So I'm going to go into my administrative administration block and I'm going to click on edit settings called, um, if I slide down to the bottom here, completion tracking. So I'm at the bottom of my course settings. I open up completion tracking. By default, this is turned on, off, and I want to turn it on. This is a one-time thing. So as soon as I do this for this particular course, if I have another badge I create that relates to or is automated based on completion of activities, I don't have to go in here again and turn it on. It is on for the course. All right, so I've done that. And then the next thing you have to do is you have to go into each individual assignment that is required to get the badge, required um, to be completed to get the badge, and you have to turn completion on for each individual assignment. So I just turned editing on, and I'm going to do that for two of these things. So to do that, you go into the activity settings. So that's that little gear right there. And this is at the bottom. And there is a section called activity completion for the specific thing that has to be completed. So what I would do is I would turn that on. So in this case, I don't want it to be counted as complete just because the student says it is. I mean, I want them to actually have to do it. So I'm going to click on show activity is complete when the following conditions are met. And there are three conditions that you can select from. One is that they've just clicked on that thing and looked at it. So maybe you post um, a PDF or that, they, uh, that students have to read, or maybe you posted a video. Um, you, then your option might be that they simply have to view the page. Um, but this is an actual assignment where they have to submit something. They have to type in some online text. So I'm going to go further with it. And I could either say that they have to submit the activity, the assignment, which means it doesn't really matter how they do, or I could even be, um, you know, it has to be graded by me. So it doesn't say what the particular grade is. That's my next tutorial. But let's just say I have to give that student a grade. I actually want to do it that way. And you can note that there is a place where you can choose a grading scale. I'm just using a word scale, um, satisfactory, unsatisfactory, or, or outstanding. But you can also do a point value scale if you'd like as well. So if you do choose this box, um, in order for it to be considered complete, this activity, the teacher must um, uh, grade it. All right, so I'm going to go uh, save and return to course. And note that I would do that for all of these. So I'm going to do it for a second one. This is another assignment. I go into the settings for the assignment. I scroll to the bottom. I go to activity completion, and I want them to require a grade for it to be considered complete. So that is the condition I select. And I'm going to say save and return to course. OK, so let's just pretend that I have done that for all these assignments. And it doesn't have to be a Moodle assignment. It might be a posted, um, like I said, a posted file or a posted page with a video on it. Note that the, as I turn on completion settings for each of these activities, there is a box that appears. And for students, there's not a check mark in it. But they, the students will see a green check mark as they complete those items. All right. So we followed rule one, which was turning on completion for the course. We followed rule two, which is turning on completion for the specific activities that need to be completed for the badge. Now what we do is go into our badges. And I've already done most of the work setting up this badge, meaning that I've uploaded the image and such.
but I want to manipulate the criteria. So what is it that they need to do to get this badge automated? So I'm going to go into the edit button for the badge. And for me to mess with the criteria, I'm going to, I have to disable this badge temporarily. And then I can go into the criteria tab. And I had originally set this up to be issued manually, but now I want to automate it. So I'm going to, I don't want it to be a manual thing. So I'm going to remove that criteria. By the way, if your badge has actually been awarded to somebody, you are no longer allowed to adjust the criteria. So you really want to firm this up before you start awarding the badges. All right, this time I want to do it based on the completion of some activities. Now, the only ones that appear as options are the specific activities that I turned activity completion on for. So obviously I didn't finish, but in this particular case, I want them to get this badge if they do all of these things, not any of them, not just one, but all of them, and then they'll get the badge. Once again, I want to reiterate that this tutorial um, is not telling you how it is that you automate a badge being awarded based on a particular score. This just is them completing it, and that is simple, straightforward. So then I go and save, and that is it. Although I'm not quite finished with this because I do have several um, other activities in that unit that I want to add to this. All right, good luck.